In this video, we'll look at how to determine the number of divisors. So suppose you're given the divisors 2, 3, 3, 3, 5, 5, 7, and 7. You could multiply them all together, you'd know the number, but it doesn't matter. This is break that number down into its prime number divisors, which ended up being these numbers. And then the question is, how many divisors are there? Well, obviously 2 and 3 and 5 and 7 are a divisor of the number, but so is any combination of these times together, like 7 times 7, 49. So the number divides by 49. It also divides by 5 times 7, or 5 times 5, or 3 times 5 times 5. So any combination of them, you can use 6 of them or 7 of them. So we want to know how many combinations of divisors there are. What we really want to use is the formula p plus 1, q plus 1, r plus 1, and so on. In fact, might as well put another bracket because there are 1, 2, 3, 4 different types of objects here. So let's put s plus 1 for this formula. Now, another thing before we get started, you might want to ask yourself, do we need to subtract 1? And that is, normally we take away 1 if you can't have the null set. That is, you, you have, do you have to pick at least one divisor? The answer is, yeah, you have to pick at least one of the divisors. So normally we take away 1 here. Except that, this is a special case, in the case of divisors, the actual number 1, that is the digit 1, will be a divisor. So, except for the divisor case, normally we subtract 1 here because you have to choose at least one of these things. This is a case where you have to choose at least one thing, but we would add it back on because 1 is also a divisor. So, let's leave out that minus 1 plus 1 and just go with the number of divisors is the number of each different type of object. Well, we have 1, 2. So, we'd be 1 plus 1 here, or two choices. You either, when you're making divisors, include the two or don't include the two. Two choices. With the threes, you have four choices. You could have no threes or choose one of the threes or include two of the threes or include three of the threes. Four choices. In other words, your choices are always whatever number there are of the object plus one. So in the case of the five, three choices. No fives, one five, or two fives. Same thing for the sevens. You have three choices. No sevens, one seven, or two sevens. That makes three choices. And now multiply those together. You can do that in your head or on a calculator. Two times four is eight. Eight times three, 24. 24 times three is 72. In other words, there are 72 divisors, different numbers that divide the original number made up of these prime divisors. Question B asks, how many of those divisors are odd? Number of odd divisors. Well, there's just a little trick you need to know, an understanding about odd and even. Any of these divisors that are odd can be included. It's really just this 2. If we just exclude this 2, then obviously 3 and 5 and 7 are odd. But if you know this fact, the question's easy. And the fact is, any odd number times an odd number will still be odd. 5 times 5 is 25, still odd. 5 times 5 times 3 is 25 times 3 is 75, still odd. Any odd divisors times any others will keep it odd. We just need to get rid of this 2. So let's cover it up, and then we're using the same sort of formula, p plus 1, q plus 1, r plus 1, and we don't need s this time because we only have three different numbers, 3, 5, and 7. We also don't need to take away 1 because we'd add it back on for the special case of 1 is also a divisor. So, how many 3's do we have? 3, so there are 4 choices. 1, 2, 3 3's or no 3's. Same with the 5's except there's only 2 of them so that makes 3 choices. 1, 5, 2, 5, or no 5's. And same for the 7's. No 7's, 1, 7, or 2 7's. Oh, I almost wrote a 7 there as I was talking. So three choices. Pretty common mistake. It's not the number that we put in here, it's the number of choices. No sevens, one seven, or two sevens. Three choices. So what's four times three? Twelve times three is thirty-six. So therefore there are thirty-six odd divisors. Now you can use the same sort of logic 
to solve a question like how many of the divisors are even, but there's a way faster way. And that is to recognize that if there are this many odd divisors, then whatever is left over have to be even. In other words, the number of even divisors is just the total number of divisors minus the odd divisors. And so you just take 72, the total divisors, and subtract the 36 even ones, sorry, 36 odd ones, which means there are 36 even divisors as well. That's faster than trying to count them all again using the formula. You could, though, but this is faster. Need a therefore statement. There are 36 even divisors. And so that's an example of how to do determine the number of divisors